You know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Filmmaker's Focus. I'm Doc Kennedy. This week, we're going to do something a little bit different. I thought 25 episodes in, maybe we should give you guys the opportunity to get to know me a little bit. So I'm going to share some of my story, and hopefully that'll inspire you. I don't know, maybe it won't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> We all have a different story, though, and that's what's important. We all have a different path that we've taken to get to where we are. Some of us are way ahead in the game. Some of us are, you know, at the 50, half time, whatever you want to call it. You know, if you want to look at the field, we're at the 50 yard line. If you want to look at the game, it's half time. But what's important is that we're all heading in a common direction and we can all offer assistance in helping each other. That's always been my goal with Filmmakers Focus is to bring people on that will help not only inspire you, but give you tangible tools, tangible advice that you can implement in what you're doing today. So we'll dive in here. We'll backtrack to when I was a little fella. I was born in Montana, lovely state, and I miss it. That Montana is always home to me, and I'm proud of that. I was born in Missoula, lived in Kalispell and Libby, and if you know Western Montana, you definitely know those spots. And we moved away from Montana when I was in fifth grade. That was tough on me. Uh, I, n things were never the same when it came to school. I had a really rough time in school. Um, actually, before that, I was doing pretty good. I, I, you know, and, and, you know, people change as they're growing up and all that stuff. And that was happening before we moved away from, from Montana. But when we got to Washington State, uh, you know, I, I just had a really hard time. And, and most of it stemmed to self-image. I just didn't see myself as, you know, nothing was ever good enough. I was always trying to be a part of some clique that, you know, didn't want me in for whatever reason, you know. And, I, I mean, really, I, you know, when you try to force yourself into having different caliber friends, um, that really shows the shallowness that you see yourself at, you know, in my opinion. And, and this is what happened to me. So... You know, I missed out. You know, and I'm just hashing out here, guys. I'm just going to tell you what's on my mind right now, on my heart. And hopefully this will impact somebody. But, you know, I really missed out on making some good friends because I was too busy trying to impress people that I shouldn't have been, you know. And it wasn't because the people I was trying to impress were bad people. They were great people. I just, it wasn't the right place. And I needed to be in the right place. And I, I missed out on a lot of opportunity in school because of that. So fast forward to senior year. Uh, I skipped most of my senior year. I was getting picked on a lot. Had a really rough time with bullying. Um, you know, and a lot of that stemmed to me being a target because I just had zero self-image. And I don't blame those guys that picked on me. They had their own crap going on. And it's interesting as we grow older and we talk to those people, um, you know, you, you just never know what people are going through. The old adage, hurting people hurt people or hurt people hurt people, you know, it's so true, you know, um, plenty of stories on that. But, you know, I don't blame them for what happened. It actually made me a better person now. And... You know, I, I think that's important, too, you know, with this. Uh, I know a lot of people are hurting, and, and maybe you're, you're a young person that's listening right now, or maybe you're older, you know, and you can relate to this. You know, if, if you're not feeling like uh, people are treating you right, uh, you know, it's okay. It's okay. This too shall pass, and you just go be the best person that you can be. I believe now, I didn't at the time, you know, I had a rough time trying to figure out how to overcome that stuff. But I believe now that you do overcome with love. So uh, I got out of high school and I never went back to school. 
you know, I never did a day of college in my life. Didn't want anything to do with school because everything that I re- associated school with was negative. Now, at some point in my high school time, I had this moment with my mom that was impacting on my life. And I'm going to share this with you. And I want you to know that I came from the most loving, caring parents that a person could ever ask for. And they're still around, you know, and we have a wonderful relationship. I'm so thankful to have been, uh, you know, just afforded the opportunity to be born into a family that showed true love. But we all make mistakes, too. And I had this desire to be an actor. And I told my mom that, and she said, get real. That really threw me off. I already had a low self-image and then throw in that, you know, your dream's really not worth going after. That kind of stung. But you got to also consider that we came from a town of about 5,000 and doing that type of stuff just wasn't common. My mom really did want what was best for me. And for her, you know, at that time, it would have been, hey, if you can just get out of school with a passing grade, <laughs> we'll be, you know, that'll be a plus because it's not even looking like that'll happen. I had a, another time in school where the school counselor sat down with me and my mom. My grades were horrible. You know, I was I was acting up and whatnot. And the counselor said, I might as well go to work at the local mill because that was all I was ever going to add up to. And I'm telling you this stuff, not because I hold grudges against these people. Not at all. Not at all. But it did impact me at that time, you know, and it did steer me in a certain direction. Now, when people tell you stuff that is hurtful, it's up to us how we're going to accept it. We can either brush it off and move on, or we can choose to accept it as reality. And we all get to make that choice. At that time, I chose to accept those comments as reality. So I got out of high school immediately, same day, went to work full time, had this job. I, I had, I've had over 30 jobs in the last what, 15 years. So, you know, my, my lifespan at a job wasn't very long. I, I was literally averaging about six months because I was just trying to find anything that would make me happy that I could see myself doing as a career. And I didn't know it at the time, especially when I was in my early 20s, but I definitely have this entrepreneurial spirit. I'm a much better employee now than when I was younger because the maturity is caught up, but I'm a horrible employee. (laughs) And the reason is because I just, I hate the clock. I hate having a cap there. I can only do so much. I hate that. And for other people, that works great. And there's been times in my life where I've asked God, why did you wire me like this? Why couldn't you have just made me a nine to five guy? Because, you know, I see those guys and they just go to work, go home and and they're happy, you know, and I'm happy when I'm out making my own work. And we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit here. I'm kind of, yeah, you know, just enjoy the ride. I don't really know where we're going. I wrote some notes down here, but I'm just spewing from my heart here. So catch up, like I'm 24, 25 years old. I meet these guys that were entrepreneurs and they were doing multi-level marketing. And I know that there's, you know, people either like it or don't. For me, it was the best thing that I needed at that time. And I'll tell you why. It wasn't because of the business itself. It was because I was blessed with people that poured into me I tell you what, I I tell you, my dream was on life support. My dream of being an actor, of being a filmmaker was on life support. And these people helped revive it. You know, they helped spark, you know, not even, you know, they didn't know anything about acting or filmmaking, but they just said, hey, that dream in your heart, you can do it, man. You can do it. I needed that, man. You know, I needed that so bad. And I'm going to take a moment here to encourage you to offer that same encouragement to people around you. People need to hear that, you know, all they hear is negative, 
negative, negative, negative. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know, blah, blah, blah. They need to hear that there is hope, you know, that they can, that they can. And you might be the only person in their life that's offering that hope. Think about that, you know, a simple, you can do it, man. You might be the only person that's offered that all year. So I digress. So these guys that I met, they uh, gave me some books. You know, I'm reading leadership books. I'm uh, John Maxwell type stuff. You know, I'm reading financial type stuff. And I'm, I'm getting this spark of entrepreneurialism that's really starting to make sense. And I started having this idea that if I could make a million dollars, maybe I could make a movie. I had never picked up a camera in my life. I We didn't have a video camera growing up. I don't think there's any footage of me as a kid. There's none that I know of. You know, I had a little snapshot that I, I remember using when I was a little bit older, but nothing special. It was just for, you know, snagging pictures. It, it would be like the equivalent of what you would do with your phone today. You know, it's just used in that manner. And, of course, developing film wasn't cheap, so it wasn't like I was using it hardly ever, really. I still have that camera, by the way. It's kind of <laughs> kind of fun. And there's a roll of film in there. I should develop that sometime. <laughs> so then around the same time that these guys come in, that in my dream's being kind of revived, I'm starting to get this hazy vision of a possibility. And I uh, started dating this girl, and things went south. And that, that was a, a heartbreaker. But what was important through that? I mean, this was a, a very difficult time, very difficult time. So another part of my story is my faith. And my faith is very important to me. And I know it's not to everyone. That's fine. That's great. I love hearing everyone's stories. I want to hear everyone's story. And I love when we're able to just accept other people's stories because my story and the essence of Jesus in my life is going from a hateful person, which I totally was coming out of high school. There, there was some dark stuff going on to coming out to a person that wants to love people and love people straight up. So I go through this dark time. You know, there's hurting times and it doesn't matter what faith you are, no faith, whatever. People go through hurting times. And the grieving process is different for everyone. But I went through this time where I just desperately wanted to laugh. And I started getting into to watching comedy. And that changed things. Because I saw what the power of a laugh could do. The Bible says that laughter is like a medicine. I could feel that, you know. I saw that. Felt it myself. And I knew that that was something that I could offer other people. So I started doing uh, what I could to learn about comedy. I Again, I'm living in a town of 5,000, not much going on there. But I got into uh, some online acting courses. I'll leave a link to it in the show notes. I, I thought it was super fantastic. The originator is Steve Roy. The writing class alone, I believe, is was instrumental in helping me get to where I am now as a filmmaker. So a couple of years go by and course there's no open mics there in the small town I gotta leave and I know that and for me that was a little nerve-wracking but I knew I needed to take a chance and just go for it and I had figured out a few different cities that I could move to the one that made the most sense was Seattle because I was closest I had a friend that was living in Tacoma Tacoma is about 40 miles south of Seattle and he says we have this place available you can move in it's a house rent the room, super cheap. And then, you know, in a month or so, you can go move to Seattle, find a place. Great. So I move in. I end up staying there for three years. And then I uh, moved into an apartment that I'm still in today. So that was, and I've been in this apartment now four years. So you might be thinking, how do you know anything about filmmaking? You don't know crap, which is partially true. So you know what? This is what's so cool about this stuff is I'm learning as we're going too. You know, I, I'm learning all the time. I love learning. And I feel like this is one of those special industries where you're just going to work it until you're dead. 
because you love doing it, because you love learning, doing new stuff all the time. You know, I love seeing these old directors like Clint Eastwood working into their old ages, but doing it because they have this passion for telling stories through motion picture. And there's always something new to learn. So how I got my education in filmmaking, in video production. When I moved to Tacoma, I started going to church at this, it's a large church that has a video production team. They were looking for volunteers and I signed up. Again, never held a camera. I jumped on board and haven't looked back. I spent the first two years with their live production team. I worked my way from zero to director uh, and I'm still a, a part-time director. I fill in as needed. Um, and I, I love serving with them. One of my favorite aspects of filmmaking is the team aspect. And I love being a part of that team. So I'll give my time when I can, gladly. For me, it's a win-win because they've given so much to me. And the least I can do is try to return it. And also, I feel like what we're sharing is impacting lives in a positive way. So a couple years in, I still didn't know anything about video production. Uh, all I knew was live production, but it was something, and you know, and it was something that I was getting better at, especially with when it came to dealing with people. I have learned a ton about dealing with people by working live productions where I'm directing. You know, people are relying on me to lead them. I love that, you know, and I, I really enjoy being on the other end of that being a team member that can just go out and help as needed and allow someone else to take the reins when it comes to leading. So a couple years in with that, I find out that, hey, they need help with video production as well. So I was working part-time and I started volunteering about 20 hours a week. And that was because I just wanted to learn video production. So another win-win. I'm helping them on their productions. They're teaching me what I need to learn and they need help. So it, it was great, great school. You know, for me, that was school. I was learning on the job. They're showing me lighting techniques, audio, uh, and we're all learning at the same time. The video production team there, compared to when I started, compared to now, is night and day. And it's continuing to grow. Again, this is one of those things that we're just going to be growing with it forever. And I love that. So a couple years ago, I busted out. Uh, I, I had bought my first camera, the Canon 60D, and I decided that it was time. It was time for me to go work production myself. It was time for me to become that entrepreneur. And I started uh, freelance and video production for a living. Did that for two years straight. There was a lot of times where I was really nervous about where the next meal is coming from. And about eight months ago, I hit a real dry spell. It just got to a point where I had to get a part-time job. So I did that, and I worked that. And you guys kind of, if you've been tracking episodes, you know that I've been doing that for a while now. I was able to leave the job uh, about uh, a month ago now, and I'm back to full-time production. You know, taking that job was great because it allowed me to have the time to kind of reevaluate things, get back on track. And another thing that I'm looking at is uh, getting back into stand-up comedy. I love helping people laugh. You know, I love offering that opportunity for people. And I do. I see any time that someone does something funny, I see that as an opportunity, an opportunity to laugh, whether that's me laughing or me giving the opportunity to someone else. But I believe that's a great gift. You know, that's a great gift that other people have. I don't think mine's anything extra special, but I know I do have that gift. And I just want to be able to use that in the best way that I can. So I am looking at uh, getting back on stage, and I'm super excited about that as well. The other thing is, as I've mentioned throughout this, I love being in front of the camera. I love acting. And those opportunities have been growing as well. I'm super excited about that. I honestly would rather be in front of the camera than behind it most of the time. So the opportunities that are coming have been extra special. Um, I am so appreciative of anyone who would consider having me in their film. You know, that I take it as such an honor because it's been, I, I'm 35 years old now, and this is 35 years of having this dream to do this. 
you know, some gigs are paid, some aren't. You know, getting that little paid gig, oh, man, that's exciting. But I love it so much, you know, I... You know, I'm not at that point where I care if I get paid or not. So, you know, I just want to do it, you know, and I want to be out there and getting better at that, getting better at what I do, and also behind the camera. I still, you know, I'm since I'm working freelance video production, I'm always working on getting better with that. You know, I want to provide the best services I can. So that's where things are right now. And hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of who I am a little bit better. Uh, that was my goal with this episode. Just allow you to get a little bit more of a, just a better view of myself. Because the, the more that we get to know each other, the more trust that we build between each other, the better off we're going to be. And uh, the more help I'm going to be able to offer you because I'll know where you might need it. So the way that that works is you have to actually get in touch with me and share with me your story. So if you're down for that, I would love to hear from you. I want to hear your story. I want to hear where you're at. And how I may be of service, how filmmakers focus can impact you. Uh, You know, I want to know what type of guests we should be getting on, uh, however that may go. You know, I I just want to be able to help you wherever I can uh, with whoever we can. And I'm going to leave you with one final thought. And this is something that I've been running with for a while now. It's the idea that you do what you can where you are with what you have. Every one of us has the tools available to make a feature film. You know, if I was going to use my phone, for example, to make a feature film, I would look at making a silent film. Why not? The artist won Best Picture not too long ago, you know, and that was a silent film. So why not, you know, do something different, you know? The excuses aren't there anymore, so now it's just up to you. It doesn't have to be the best-looking thing of all time. I love what Alex Ferrari is doing with This Is Meg, where he's just saying, forget it, I'm going to make a feature, here we go. And they're doing it, and uh, that's exciting. So I want to hear what you guys are doing with what you have right now. Honestly, that's the stuff that's exciting. Uh, You know, we're indie filmmakers, most of us, and I want to hear about what you're doing with what you have. If you want to head on over to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, it's all at Filmmakers Focus. I'm also working on getting some new blog posts up, and I'm looking at getting some guest blog posters. Is that how they say it now? Guest blog posters? Anyway, (laughs) Uh, getting some people to guest blog and uh, leave some awesome content for you to help you take your craft to the next level. Go and grow. Double dip that chip? Excuse me? You double dipped the chip! Double dipped? What, what, what are you talking about? You dipped the chip, you took a bite, and you dipped again. So? That's like putting your whole mouth right in the dip! Look, from now on, when you take a chip, just take one dip and end it. Well, I'm sorry, Timmy. (laughs) But I don't dip that way. Oh, you don't, huh? No. You dip the way you want to dip. I'll dip the way I want to dip. Give me the chip! Hey, hey, hey!